Okay, so we're back. Um, this is hopefully the the final installment for now of You'll Never Publish an Indie Horror Again, um, which is a, a cautionary tale about uh, unscrupulous um, small presses who take advantage of newbie authors. And um, if you're in horror and you're a newbie author, you should know this. You should know this stuff. So, um, uh, in the last video is, is um, relating a, a, a true story about uh, a man who was uh, um, uh, had signed a, signed a contract with this um, press, which I'll call um, Landshark Press. Now, Landshark Press is pretty much of a a combination of uh, different entities. It, it isn't meant to represent any one um, corporation or group of individuals. It's a sort of a distillation of what's out, what's out there, but all these, these stories are composed of real life grenades, I mean elements. Uh, so, the story in progress was that this, um, this young um, author um, had a great anthology concept. He wanted to do um, an anthology uh, concerning um, B-movie science fiction horror homage where the, uh, the contributors would make their own um, B-movie horror homage um, things. And um, it was it was signed. Um, the first uh, the first uh, um, installment in the in the series was was signed to Landshark Press, and they were um, at this point preparing to go into the next um, the next phase. So, uh, uh, at this time, uh, the um, the editor anthologist uh, from a land down under uh, had um, had been told and you know, um, clear and um, distinct terms that there was a, a certain author that uh, they would not publish, they would not work with, they would not associate with, and they didn't want their employees or um, authors to associate with that person either. So, as a consequence, this uh, editor from Down Under took a story accepted a story from the bad guy um, for the second um, installment of this anthology. And he was um, trying to figure out a way to um, publish this guy because this guy had actually um, acquired the anthology uh, series in the first place when he was an editor with Landshark Press. Um, and Landshark Press said, no, you can't publish this story. Um, he's on our enemies list. Yeah. So um, we, mo we move on. The first and second um, installments in the, in the series are published by Landshark Press. And at this point, the, um, the editor is feeling kind of a little like edgy because he really doesn't want you know, his publisher telling him who he can and can't be friends with and who he can publish and who he can't, you know, publish is just kind of like silly. It's junior high, right? Um, so uh, he's, he's trying to find a way to, to publish this story or any work by the guy who'd helped him publish the anthology in the first place. You know, who whose story he liked and wanted to accept. Um, now we're coming up on the third um, installment, um, and he's and he's thinking, you know, maybe I should just break away. But God, what these people do to anybody who who tries to pull out of 
the land shark cult is is pretty scary. I mean, I saw what happened to, you know, my friend. I don't want I don't want that to happen to me. And he's still, you know, because he's a good guy and he's loyal and you know has nothing against this person. Um, messages him one night and about twelve thirty, the uh, enemy enemy time enemy standard time and says, look, you know, you've got to, you have a chance here to get your you know one of your stories into the third volume of this uh, anthology. And, uh, you know, I'd like to talk about that. And uh, the guy says, oh, you know, I don't want to get you in trouble with Landshark because I know, <laughs> and you know how they deal with uh, any transgressions against their authority. Uh, so what it came down to was this person, um, um, while they were online with the enemy, they received two messages. And one message was from another author with Landshark Press, who you may remember from a previous episode in which um, a, a friend of the enemy was had his book deleted because he refused to join in the, in the witch hunt. And uh, this, this person had led the witch hunt against them. This is the same person. Is, is uh, personal messaging um, the, the editor in Australia at whatever time. Australian time, which is 11 hours ahead, so that means that uh, the person who is messaging from Long Island and another person we'll get to shortly were all were just happened to be online at what would be like 3:30 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so this is just pure coincidence. This person says, and you, I kind of have to refer to my notes, even though I'm pretty familiar with the story. This person says. Um, that, well, should, um, in the, in the article version of this, I, I give a trigger warning. So I'm going to give a trigger warning now, especially since we've had a lot of, you know, clown, clown related crime in this country. Well, actually internationally, but, um, now we've had a, you know, a crime wave of, of clowns. And my trigger warning is that this, the following anecdote involves clowns. So if you don't like clowns, they make you uncomfortable, creep you out. I understand, but you know, just letting you know. Uh, as it happens, this professional troll, um, who we've described before um, as a um, you know, psychopath with keyboard. And again, this is not an individual person we're talking about. This is a composite character, all right? This is a professional troll who, okay, say, let's, let's say they, they live in, on the East Coast, the Eastern Seaboard. Um, they're a retired party clown in their mid, early, 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 early mid 60s. Senior citizen, retired party clown, did the, the family, um, children's parties with the balloons and the bachelor parties and all of that. So, you know, professional, professional clown who is also an author with Land Shark Press. Now, this, this person who we'll call PT for a professional troll messages the editor from Australia during his conversation with the author who we'll call the enemy. Um, while they're discussing how the enemy can get back into, into the game, um, how, he, how he can you know, still publish with this anthology that he helped to, to make possible. Um, okay, this is where it gets really 
freaky and I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to the next um, video but I'll just set it up this 64 um, year old retired party clown composite character um, had operated under the professional name of cotton candy and it's just hardly an unusual name for a clown but that was the name that they used now the enemy had planned a clown horror anthology which they were calling cotton candy carnage now of course naturally this person assumed that ref the title referred to her and something bad happening to her uh, specifically rape and murder so um, she had decided um, based on nothing that the entire premise of the anthology was to do with raping and murdering her okay I'll let that sink in and uh, we'll make this a, a cliffhanger shall we